Hello, it's Elizabeth from Elizabeth's Oracle. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We are going to talk about the sun through Libra cycle for 2019. Going to look at some charts and then I'll do a little interpretation and kind of tell you what I think is important or some things, you know, suggest some things for you to look at. Here are the start times for each section of this video. Thank you again for tuning in and let's look at some charts. All right, I have four charts for you today. We'll walk you through them, point out some of the bigger aspects happening, and hopefully get you all, um, get your bearings, okay? <laughs> so first day is for the sun going into Libra. That's always where I start. And in my charts, you'll see I put the earth signs in green, the water signs in blue, the fire signs in yellow, and Oh, we're reaching some air that's in the gray. So if you look at the bottom of this chart, you will finally see some air. I pointed out that at the end of the Virgo cycle, um, we finally had Mercury and Venus in Libra bringing some air to the equation and now the sun moves in there. Um, another thing for those of you who are learning um, and want to improve, um, in addition to the mode of the sign cardinal fixed or mutable and the element earth air fire or water we can look at the degree and in this chart if you look down at the bottom um, you see the planets in Libra um, if you look up to the right you'll see the planets in Capricorn and if you look to the left and over from them you're gonna see that this cycle starts with a moon in Cancer our third cardinal sign and um, if you'll notice and now um, for people who know the south and north node are always exactly opposite but what you're going to see here is that moon and saturn um, are at that 13 to 15 degree area with the nodes in, at that 14 degree level so we are kind of coming into a phase where that 13 14 degrees is important so we kind of look for connections are there are some connections with the number um, the modality or the element so in this chart notice Saturn and the nodes that's all I'm saying that's very important and then also um, because we do have such a collection of planets in the cardinal signs um, eight out of the bodies that I watch if you include the nodes um, are in cardinal so we go what is cardinal you know that's initiation getting things started and I think after so much <laughs> a lot of us are really ready for that not only breath of fresh air with the air sign but to get things moving so big chart for um, getting those things done um, to start off the cycle so let's move to chart number two because it's not only the new moon um, but there's a there's, there's a few things I really want to point out here all right so a um, couple things one that I was just talking about the degree so this is a new moon meaning the sun and moon are both in Libra at the exact same degree and minute five degrees and 20 minutes and then we move to Uranus which isn't at 20 minutes and five degrees but it's at five degrees so we kind of notice like what's going on between them that is a queen conx they're in different elements and different modalities so we could be taking on two very different things things at this time um, are just operating in very different ways with different aspects of our lives um, but it is a new moon you guys know I'm big on those let's put out intentions and Libra themed intentions at that um, I'll go into that a little bit more in part two um, but the other thing that I want you to notice is Venus and Jupiter at 17 degrees meaning those two are about to sextile one of our more supportive aspects but also look at the players involved Venus you know our desire and at home in Libra Jupiter at home in Sagittarius both of them in outgoing positive polarity signs again and more motivation and energy and hitting this exact Jupiter connecting with Venus and bolstering those energies so very auspicious on a new moon what do you want to do what do you desire what do you want to bring more of 
in, pay attention to this because it's going to have a connection when we get to the full moon chart. So just note this new moon if you're a new moon person, the 28th. And the other part that's very important is this is also within hours of Saturn having its direct opposition to the North Node. And, you know, that also means an exact conjunction with the South Node. So we'll cover that a little bit more in part two, but really big new moon here. <laughs> so um, more than, you know, meets the eye. So that's the new moon. And then the next chart to me is like the signature chart for this cycle or a time of to pay attention and something I believe is going to be setting up a lot of what happens in the autumn because the Libra does mean we are entering a new cycle, um, new season. And so we look for like, what are some of the themes going on? And um, chart number three has a lot of them. So there is a time period here. Um, I do all my charts in mountain standard time in the US. So please be patient. For some of you, if you look at a guide or you read a lot of other astrology columns, you're, some people are going to say Pluto is going direct on the second and Mars is not going into Libra until the fourth really all depends on your time zone, but I'd say this is a very eventful 36 hours or so. In um, mountain time, all this is happening on the third. So that's just how I'm casting this chart. So don't get too confused or hung up about that. So Pluto, finally, finally, finally um, going direct. This is a really big deal. I'll expound on it in part two, but just notice this time frame, October 2nd through 4th, what starts popping up. So um, within that short little window of a little over a day, we have Pluto going direct. We have Mercury moving into Scorpio, setting a big theme for the autumn. If you look at the bottom of the chart here, you see Mercury at 29 degrees of Libra, meaning it's just about to head into Scorpio and change signs. And if you look a little further to the left, you're going to see Mars at 29 degrees, meaning it's about to change signs too. So it is coming into Libra. So Mercury leaves, but Mars goes in there. And um, I'll talk briefly about Mars in Libra in part two, but just notice this chart because I'm telling you this is going to be big and I'll explain a little bit more in part two. Last chart is for that full moon that I mentioned two charts ago. Um, very important chart. And again, this thing with the numbers and the degree, I don't mean it numerology wise or numerologically. <laughs> um, what I mean is in astrology, we look where there's an exact connection amongst things. And if you look in this chart um, where we started this new moon, everything around five degrees, or we notice things at five degrees now, 20 is a magic number. So this is, of course, um, our full moon in Libra, which means the moon is in Aries and it is at 20 degrees. Uh, Jupiter is at 20 degrees. And so is Pluto that we were just talking about. So um, as you guys know, for the cardinal energies, this means some squaring between Libra and Capricorn or the planets in Libra, no, most notably in this chart of Libra Sun um, coming into a harsh angle with Pluto, but it's also um, both the moon and the sun making a very harmonious one to Jupiter. So when I said, think about your intentions at the new moon, this is that high point of the energy. Um, you're going to get a really nice boost from Jupiter here as well. So depending on how you work with these energies, um, very important to notice what's going on here. So because these charts bring up so much, I want to describe it for you. So let's go into part two, which is interpretation. All right, so this is the interpretation section, and I'll just do my best to clarify some things and to give you some food for thought, as it were. So we are moving into the seventh sign of astrology, the cardinal air sign of Libra. It is ruled by Venus. So uh, there are a few things that we deal with here. We deal with themes of beauty, art, pleasure, cooperation, harmony, and harmony is a word that extends beyond, you know, it could be a literal musical harmony, it could be the aesthetic we live in, clothes, fashion, those things. Um, 
harmony in relationships. It is the sign of partnership, relationships, seventh house themes. Um, it also has an aspect dealing with cooperation, collaboration, getting along with others, being very considerate of others. Um, it is the sign of justice. So it is, it's got that judicious aspect where a judge will listen to everyone, consider the opinion of other, the perspective of other, and, and that's how they figure out, you know, when there's a case before them uh, of how to, you know, give justice or deliver justice. You got to take into consideration everybody's opinion, everybody's description of the experience, weigh the evidence, and so on. So that's that symbol of the scales, and it also takes us from the opposite sign of Aries, which is very like me and self-motivated and individualistic and yeah, I'm doing my thing to how does this blend into a larger context, the context of other and others, and to do that deliberation thing and do the balancing. So the sun's there for four weeks, hence the theme of the video. Mercury is there until October 3rd. Venus is at home until October 8th, but it's Mars going in there that I definitely want to point out to you. So Mars is there until November 19th. And when Mars is there, some people consider this really frustrating and some people can use it as a motivator. And so I'll explain and it's just going to be there. So, you know, do with it what you will. Um, Mars is our energy. It's the action planet. It is the ruler of Aries, the opposite sign. Mars wants to get things done. It just, you know, so this whole thing of, oh, listen to everybody's opinion, go around the room, be considerate of everyone, and back and forth, and on this hand, but on the other hand, and on the other thing. So it can feel so frustrating to Mars, because Mars is supposed to get stuff done. You know, it, it's the just do it planet. <laughs> You know, so this whole Libra thing is just can be infuriating and frustrating. So there's that part. However, um, where you can use Mars and it's like get out and do things is like if you're working to improve your relationships, be they business, be they romantic or to even create a new one because we're in initiation uh, or initiating cardinal energy. This could be your time where you're out creating new profiles, meeting new people, really working on your seventh house uh, of partnership themes and use the Mars transit, you know, to to work in that area. So just want to put that out there. Okay, so let's talk about, <laughs> I'm going to call them the big three for the autumn of 2019 and really two of them you guys have already been dealing with all year long. Um, so it all kind of comes together now. So we're talking about Saturn, Pluto and Mercury and I want to put all this together because I think it's all connected. So Saturn does that last opposition to the North Node right on the day of the new moon and this is the third of three. Um, when there's an opposition to the North Node that means the planet is also conjunct the South Node because the North and South are always at the exact same degree in minute. Um, and preceding the three Saturn oppositions to the North Node and conjunctions to the South was a Pluto opposition to the North Node. All of that started back in April. April is also when Saturn and Pluto both went retrograde on the 24th and 29th. And for those of you who were paying attention, Saturn just came out of retrograde um, on the I believe the 17th of September, 18th, somewhere in there, just newly direct. And this last opposition to the North Node, digging up the past connected with the South Node where it's conjunct, um, happens right before Pluto comes out of retrograde and turns direct. So we've just had this overarching theme since April, and that's really defined the year and course hit a peak during July when the sun was in Cancer and that's where the North Node is, issues of children versus issues of people and people in positions of power, reputations, corruption in systems. We saw all of that come to the fore um, in July um, with the Epstein case. So 
when this happens on the new moon, right before the new moon, this last Saturn one, and within a week of Pluto coming direct, I have a sense we're going to see another chapter in that story, um, or we're going to see a related big story about corruption, be it political. Um, Capricorn deals with our institutions, government, banking systems, you know, and Pluto deals with corruption and clearing things out. It's the Lord of the Underworld is what it's named after, Hades. So it will go into the deepest, darkest places. And of course, you know, sadly, tragically, that was part of what we started to see in July. So um, another aspect of that coming on that also parlays or feeds into that timing of Pluto coming direct the same day that Mercury goes into Scorpio. Mercury and Scorpio, um, of course, is related to Scor- of course, is related to Pluto because Pluto is the ruler of Scorpio. But this Mercury transit, so many things. So Mercury will be in Scorpio until December 9th. Its next retrograde will be in Scorpio during that time, and there will be a literal transit of the sun. So let me break those down. All three of the year's Mercury retrogrades have been in water signs, but the previous two had a little respite and fire. So it's like, oh God, this water is too much. Let me get some fire. So <laughs> going, not going to happen this time. Mercury will get all the way up to 27 degrees of Scorpio before it goes retrograde. So we're dealing with some very, like the most intense degrees um, of Scorpio themes um, during this time. Next, we have a literal transit of the sun. And what that means, this is an astronomical event. And so we will literally be able to see Mercury travel in front of the sun. Most of us in the Northern Hemisphere are going to be able to see that uh, November 11th, I believe is the actual date of that. Now, astro- astrologically, you know, they're cousins, astronomy and astrology. Um, the sun is where that's our self-identity. It's also our raw self-power. Mercury is our story. It's our thinking. It's how we communicate. And it's going through Scorpio. So how do we identify? Um, What have we been identifying with? So Scorpio has had many symbols over the century, the millennia, uh, and they include the snake, um, which sheds its skin. So a symbol of transformation. They include the phoenix. Again, big transformation energy. Basically, in astrology, we think of it as shamanic, um, as the purifier. And because we're beginning to understand how powerful our emotions are and what a role they play in creating our reality, um, I feel like this kind of thing is going to be emphasized where we do that look inward we do that processing um, and purification. I think it's just going to be a huge theme. Both we're going to see in the external. Um, this angle is really favorable to Pluto and Saturn in Capricorn dealing with the institutions, government, systemic corruption, everything that those two found while they were investigating <laughs> and people were in prominent positions under investigation that we're finding out. Um, so that's because Saturn and Pluto come forward we'll see the exposure Mercury is the information and so I think this is when we start to see the documents the the paper trail all of these kinds of things and we find out more Um, and I'm you know again third one of the year no little respite back into fire Um, so very intense theme to be readying ourselves for but I think we've been prepping for it or being prepared for it all year so it really makes sense as we go into the autumn of 2019 so just something for you to be aware of because it gets underway during the Libra cycle with Mercury not only going into Scorpio but hitting the shadow the start of the shadow period of that retrograde so 
Lots connected with those guys. Hope it's given you something to consider and look at. And um, last thing on that is it does deal with uh, traumas and things. So I did a show with my friend, a Scorpio, <laughs> Christina, and I'll put that in the description box. Um, so if you're dealing with things like that or that's been coming up, you know, there's plenty of resources for healing and transforming that at this time. So those are the things that I think are important to look at during this cycle. So let's get on to the resources. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching all of this. I hope that you found it helpful. I am Elizabeth Pendleton from Elizabeth's Oracle, full-time reader, been doing it for 21 years now. <laughs> um, you can find out about a personal reading at my site, elizabethsoracle.co. All of the links are always in the description box. Um, there is a free monthly newsletter that you can sign up for. Um, that way you're notified when there are new videos. There's always an Oracle message in there. And if I'm running a special, I put it in the newsletter. Um, but if you're comfortable just being here on YouTube, go ahead and please hit the subscribe uh, button and the notification bell so you can find out. I just do the videos once a month. Um, but if you'd like more news, there's the newsletter, but also on my site, I am posting a new column every week on Sundays um, for now, um, but basically that focuses in on the present week. Now, it's not a sun sign horoscope for every sign. It's just telling you what's going on with the planets, and it zeroes in a little more um, in a timely way, like each week, what's what's happening, what's important to pay attention to. So if you want your news a little more frequently, there's that. There's my free minute Friday special. <laughs> if you order a special on Friday, you will get five free minutes added to any size order. Um, it's just kind of fun and really I just, uh, speaking of Libra and saying thank you, thank you guys who are regulars and people calling and having readings on Friday. It's kept my phones busy on Friday and um, you know my business going. So thank you sincerely very, very much. Um, for that and if you're new and curious about getting a reading it's you know one of my regular specials so that you can um, you know check it out and, and see and get your chart done and that kind of thing so that's uh, those are the announcements also um, I've been doing radio shows pretty consistently the links for those kinds of things are always in the description box of these videos so avail yourself to that and we will see you when the sun goes into Scorpio wishing you a beautiful autumn of 2019 again thank you so much for watching and we'll see you when the sun goes into Scorpio